All right. Well, I'd want to welcome Mr. Rob McCauley, my uh, guest today for uh, This Day in Metal. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Chris. Happy Friday, everybody. Absolutely, right? It's been a long week. Yeah. For you. Hey, I bet, I, bet, I bet for you. I mean, with the new album and everything going on, I bet you've been, been super busy. It's been crazy. Uh, we hit Billboard the other day, which I was completely stoked about. Although they do have me in as a new artist, so I'm stoked about that. <laughs> yeah, right? We'll I know. But uh, we'll take it. Um, it's been great. I'm crazy with uh, interviews. Glad I'm talking to you at a day in metal. Um, yeah, I couldn't be happier. A great response to the record. And, uh, you know, um, as you said, we'll take what we get. Right. Well, and you know, and I'm not surprised because the album, I mean, it, it's awesome. I love it. I, uh, I've been, I think I've listened to it five or six times now and it's just, yeah, no, I dig it. I really dig it. And I will say I went deep in the tracks. I would have to say Fading Away is my favorite song on the album. I mean, so wow. the, yeah, no, it's, but I just, I was just blown away with the production, your voice, just everything that's gone, Thank you know, you. just of all of it. You can tell you worked hard on it. I did. I co-wrote uh, Fading Away with uh, the great Tommy Denander out of Sweden, who actually co-wrote and produced uh, Detroit Spaces for uh, Alice Cooper. So I was in good company. Yeah, heck yeah. No, it yeah. came out great. I mean, just and the whole album overall is incredible. So kudos yeah, to you. You know, uh, kudos to Alessandro Del Vecchio. He gets he gets a lot of uh, he gets a lot of flack because he works. Um, just about on every frontier it's not all frontiers bands um i love what he does with my stuff it we just seem to get a little bit of a different sound um kudos also to the great players in the band andrea Cerveso is just kicking it on guitar again uh and nicholas papapico on drums so um it's a great it's a great band um they they uh they give it to me. It's it's just great. I love Andres, uh, his melodies and the songwriters. I work with a great team of songwriters. So um, they throw 20, 25 songs at me. I pick 12 and I hope they're always the right 12. <laughs> yeah, so, no, it, and it was go great. Thanks. A great transition too from your very first debut with Front uh, Front uh, Frontiers Records, the first one. It was a big transition. You could tell the difference in the sound and the music. Yeah, and you know, you know, I did. I didn't want to do the the first one, honestly. Um, I think I told everybody that. Um, didn't know what to do. Um, yeah. Didn't know, any, didn't know anybody would listen, and so I kind of just uh, I flitted around with people that I had written songs with from my past, and I went, okay, I give them a little of this, a little of that. And so you got standing on the edge. Um, we had a great reception to it. And then I thought, okay, if we get the second one, a chance to do the second one, we'll take it where I want it to go more. And uh, we decided to uh, take this one up a couple of notches. And uh, I, I'm happy with it. It's really good. Yeah. So with that being said, you're so this new album is definitely more of the direction and sound that you personally wanted to do. And yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, when it's done, you go ah. I wish I had just done something a little bit more, you know. Um, but we'll do that on the next one. But uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, it's 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 it was a better direction. This one, um, we uh, I carefully picked the songs on this one that 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 I was uh, I wanted it to go in that direction. And the next one, we'll take it a step a step up again. Yeah, you know? yeah. And so, how how do you do your songwriting process? Is it just you, or how do you do it? Um. It's just me when I'm at home, when I do my demos. But, um, you know, I, I, I have long discussions with, with Alessandro Del Vecchio, who produces it. Um, he's got he's got a team with him in Italy, um, Herman Nori and uh, Guillermo Di Mordi. And then I have two great writers out of Sweden that I worked also with on Standing on the Edge, Pete Albenberg and uh, Ulrich Longfist. And so together they sent me about 25 songs. And they just go, here, yeah. here's, a bundle, here's a bundle of songs, do whatever you want. And I pick 12 and then I, I, I listen and I listen and I make sure there's a, a thread, a cohesiveness to the whole thing. And then I said about writing lyrics and melodies and and I move through it and, and, and get a sound going. And I just sort of do all demo, all the vocals, make sure I have what I 
think is going to work. I send it to Alessandro and he goes, this is great. Let's just, let's go do it. And then I record my vocals for real. And um, I have a great studio here close to me in LA uh, with uh, engineer Andy Zuckerman. Andy and I have worked on the last one. So he, he sets the mic up. He goes, I'm ready when you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can't make it easy. And we do it. And we, yeah, we have a blast doing it. And that's really the key. We try to have fun doing You know, we don't sort of dig in and go, this has to be. We don't, we don't get into a, we don't get into a rabbit hole about the whole thing. We just do it and have fun with it. And we go, there you go. We're done. Yeah. You know? No. And well, and it comes through in the music because the music's fun. I mean, it's, and the thing that I liked about it is it's relatable to now and this time, but then also it encompasses, you know, the hard rock that, you know, we grew up on in the eighties and seventies and that kind of thing. So it encompasses yeah, it I all. Mean, it's, hard, it's hard to get away from something that you grew up with and it's, it's, it's sort of in your DNA. Um, but I do like to, you're, you're absolutely right. I do like to keep the production a little modern um, and not always go down the same, the same path and try and mix it up a little bit. And we have fun doing that too. And uh, that's what music is for playing with. <laughs> right? right. At the end of the day, it's got to be fun. <laughs> nothing else. Right? Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then it would be, a, then it would actually be a job. And then, you know, then it's know, know, work. I know. And I, I don't, I've never been good with a job. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so what's your background? Where are you from? I'm Irish originally. I'm from the South. Um, um, I moved to London sort of when I was in my late teens, went to visit one of my sisters. And I went, oh, this place is cool. I might stay. And uh, I lived in London for about, oh, I think, 12, 15 years. Um, and then in my mid-20s, um, late 20s, I met Mr. Schenker and worked out of Germany for a bunch of years uh, before coming to L.A. to mix the perfect timing record, the first Macaulay Shanker. And I've lived in L.A. for 35 years. Yeah. So, so you've done definitely a musical journey, uh, you know. Um, I have my life here in the States, you know. It's yeah, my yeah. Life now has been for a long time. And uh, my kids were born here. My wife was from Austria, so we're kind of, European base, but but we've all been here for thirty plus years. So, yeah. Nice, nice. So, so in, throughout the years, how has your songwriting changed, or is it pretty much the same way that you've always done it, or just? Um, you know, I like to, I like to, I don't. I always tell people I don't have a book of words on my desk that I can go okay, write about this. Um, I take the music as it comes to me. Um, I play a little bit, but not enough to that I want people to hear it. Um, I'm very good at dictating and directing people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I'm a drummer by nature. Um, wanted to be a great drummer. I sucked. But in my, <laughs> in my head, I'm a great drummer. and I'm a great guitar player. Um, but it's easier if I have somebody like, you know, Michael Schenker playing guitar. Yeah, right. <laughs> you don't want it easy be, for anybody, right? Yeah, you, you don't, you don't want to go down that road. Um, so I, I, um, I've worked with enough people. Uh, on the level of songwriting that people kind of know my style and and I keep changing that style as, as I kind of move through the songs and they'll send me a piece of music and then I'll basically, I'll break it down into pieces and I go, change it to that and change it to this. And it seems to work seamlessly for me. Um, and I love being involved. I write the lyrics and the melody because I have a particular way to phrase and um, not that I don't sing other people's songs, but I have a particular way to phrase when I write my own songs that, that suits my style at what it is that I do. Um, yeah. And I think that just keeps it more individual to me as opposed to emulating somebody all the time because I have to sing it like they sang it. I sing it like I sing it. And so far, <laughs> so, far, so, so far so good yeah so that's, yeah. that's well, what I do I write the lyrics the melodies I try to find stories um, that I find interesting and you know make make everything a little theatrical if, if, if that makes any sense yeah yeah totally makes sense so when did you start singing what was, what was the age where you went wow I, I can sing or I want to sing or, or actually go where I want to sing because it's not right the first time where you go oh my um, gosh I'm 
so I don't really regard myself as a singer. Um, okay. I'm, I'm, as I said, I'm a, I'm a drummer at heart. That's really what I wanted to do. Um, I would play drums um, and I'd do all the background vocals. And, you know, forever they would go, dude, you're a much better singer than you are. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, like, you know, I have feelings, man. You know, that hurts, yeah. right? Yeah, um, yeah. Sometimes they would kick me out to the front to do a lead vocal and I hated it. I absolutely hated it with a passion. Um, but I loved to sing. I love to sing. Um, and I have my, my favorites, like my Paul Rogers, you know, is always my go-to guy. Lou Graham was a go-to guy. I loved listening to Motown because I just loved those big hooks, those big choruses, those great lyrics. And so I'd be always singing, but I never wanted to be a singer. So with that in mind, I sort of went forward. And yeah. and I thought, okay, as long as I don't think of myself as a singer, but I have fun doing it, maybe it maybe it'll work. And I was actually um, in uh, in Dublin, in Ireland, and I was playing drums. And um, we had a, a singer, obviously, but we also had a female singer, and he liked to play drums and he goes, okay, you take this one. And then I'd go to the front and this girl singer went on to get her own TV show and everything. She was like really good. But yeah. she used to say to me, you know, you should really take this seriously. You're, you're a much better singer than he is a drummer and a singer. And, uh, and I went, well, that's nasty, you know, but so more and more I'd end up being up front singing and, um, I suppose it just became habitual after a while. You know, somebody said, hey, can you record this for me? I saw a seven-inch single, you know, yeah. vinyl. And I went, well, that was kind of cool. And then I just thought, well, let's do, make another one, another one, and see where that goes. And then I got a break uh, to record my first Grand Prix record. And the rest, I guess, was... <laughs> History. History, as they say. This was, was yes, where I am. Here I am now. Well, it's just funny and ironic that you say, you know, I mean, after a, a four decade career that, you know, I re all I wanted to be was a drummer. And it's like, here you are after four decades, you know? Yeah. And I, you know, when I, when I'm in the music, it's, it's, I hear so much, I hear so much of, 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 of the bottom end. It's really, and, and, and that kind of, I get a lot of inspiration for that. And, uh, I love being in the music, you know, not sitting on top of it like singers kind of do. I like, I like, and I love the whole live performance because it's just, it's just a different, it's a different animal, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I, and I love that. So, yeah. Heck yeah. So speaking of live, uh, what, what are your plans for touring this album and, uh, um, playing it's live? It's always difficult, of course, because my band is, uh, for the most part in, in Italy, but, uh, I will perform at the Frontiers, the record label at their festival. Um, they were down, of course, because of the pandemic and all of that sort of, you know, restrictions. That's all lifted now. They will they will put the festival back on this year. I will perform in Milan, and we're trying to uh, surround the, that festival with other dates with the band because it seems such a waste just to rehearse for one show. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So that's the plan. We're we're uh, we're currently working on putting some dates together, and hopefully that will just roll into into more shows so that's the plan sam yeah 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 and so what else do you have going i mean do you have any other irons in the fire yeah i do i work i work uh, very closely with this wonderful italian composer who does mostly movie soundtracks so it's kind of a new suit of clothes for me um and he sent me a bunch of songs that we just finished mixing and our our thing is to try and showcase that with a full orchestra this year and again, it's very soundtrack, but it's it's epic. It's it's huge, and yeah. uh, that's a ton of fun because it's a little nerve wracking because it's new. Um, and when you have a conductor up there, like you know, telling you what to do and where to yeah. do, it, you're like, oh shoot! Um, it's it's just awesome. But I'm also part of um, of a classic rock show that I did in Vegas for about seven years, right up to COVID. Uh, Reading the Rock Vault, that was permanent uh, residency in, in Vegas. I performed about 1,500 shows. Oh, so wow. next, week, 
Next week, I will go in for uh, the 10th anniversary celebration with them. Um, I'm also part of another classic rock show called Icons of Rock, which is really, really cool. And uh, we got to play Bolivia last year. I think we'll play Mexico this year and other cities. Oh, wow. And that's got a that's got a lot of great people out of Foreigner, people out of ACDC, people uh, from Santana, uh, oh, wow. people from the Romantics. And the band is just it's it's incredible. So I love to do that. So yeah, uh, sounds super. I do that too, and it's it's a it's a fun time with those huge classic songs that everybody knows. So um, yeah. it's great, and I love to travel. So it's you kill two birds with the one stone. Well, yeah, and like you said, with the pandemic kind of lightening up a little bit, it's nice to be able to travel and do those things again. It's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. Plus, last year I toured. Um, I was only supposed to play four shows: uh, Spain and Italy with Schenker. And I ended up doing the entire European tour, which was a blast. So we're kind of looking at what's going to happen with that this year also. Oh, wow. That would be exciting, too, yeah. as well. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you the crowds are excited to hear you guys when you play live together again. Um, you know, MSG shows are like, yeah, they're on they're on 12. And mm -hmm. uh, Michael is, I think he's playing better now than than he ever did. And we have a big history together. So that is always a ton of fun yeah nice nice that's cool that's good to hear so uh, we're going to do a little word association real quick oh, we about are your career yes yes so i want you to think of the first thing that pops into your head when i mention this band oh my and god And so we're going to go through your career we're going to go through your career so oh dear you mentioned them before so grand prix when i say grand p what's the first thing you think of with that band oh samurai samurai mm -hmm. the the album samurai it was a big a big moment for us yeah yeah and, yeah. All right. Uh, going on, uh, you said it already. Uh, Macaulay Shanker Group. What's the first thing you think of when you think of that name? Oh, I think Anytime was was a big a big stable for us there. It really it really broke us broke us in at radio, um, broke us into big tours. Uh, people still people still love the song, so I'm very grateful for that. Yeah. So I so I guess it was obviously a huge life changing experience for you, the Macaulay Schenker Group. Yes, it really was. Considering you know, I never wanted my name as part of that because I always loved MSG. Made perfect sense to me. Michael Schenker Group. He had it established. We did share the same record label, Chrysalis, in my time with with Grand Prix. So wasn't we were not familiar with each other. Um, we'd see Michael. He'd see us. And then he came to see a Grand Prix show, and then I get invited to to rehearse with the band. And we were going out on tour with Sammy Hager, in actual fact. And um, that timing wasn't perfect. It took four years for me to actually join Michael. And Michael said, hey, we should change the name. And I went, no, we shouldn't. It's already mm -hmm. have a name, MSG, <laughs> Michael Schenker Group. And he goes, no, I want a partner. I think we should call it Macaulay Schenker Group, and that way you keep the... You keep the same letters, Macaulay Shanker Group, MSG, and uh, I have a partner and uh, we'll move on from there. And they wanted to break into the uh, U.S. market. They wanted to break into MTV, VH1, uh, yeah. rock, daytime rock radio, all of that sort of stuff. And um, I guess we did to a to a, a good degree. Yeah. Oh, yeah, most definitely, guys huge band back in the day i remember mtv i mean all the time on headbangers <laughs> ball and stuff like yeah. that so yeah and it, it was it was a it was a great time no question oh, i bet i bet i bet you fun beyond belief i mean uh fun times 10 i'm sure <laughs> you know what they say had a great time don't remember a thing <laughs> <laughs> there you go right <laughs> and then uh all right and then the last group i was going to ask you about black swan what do you think of when you hear that band name shake the world and we did we came out with that record, um, um, you know, very quickly, you know, uh, Jeff Pilson called me and I've known Jeff for 30 plus years, right? Jeff yeah. was best man at my wedding. So we're like brothers in arms. And uh, first thing he said was, hey, I am, record company wants me to form a super group. And I went, oh, you're calling the wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, we both are really not into that sort of tag, that super group thing. And yeah. he, said, he said, hey, I was talking to Reb because Reb did the tooth and nail with Dawkins. And um, I think we should do this. 
And I said, you're playing bass, right? And he goes, oh, no, I won't be playing bass. I'll, I'll be producing and maybe co-writing, but I, I won't be in the band. And I went, well, that's a no. Yeah. You know? And so Reb and I kind of, you know, kicked him around the, the playing field a little bit till he uh, till he did play in the band. And <laughs> um, absolutely love that band. It's a great band. It's great songwriting. Uh, when we released Shake the World, we had such a such a good time and such a good response. And then we released Generation Mind, second one, and we had an even better response. It's a great band. I wish we could play live. You know, with crazy busy schedules. Yeah. Um, with Winger and White Snake and Foreigner and, um, but you know, something will happen. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny you should mention that because Frontiers put together all these great bands and all these wonderful things, but it's all the bands have all different projects. So it's, you know, for a fan, for a fan trying to go see the, it's like you want to see them play them live. And it's I couldn't agree hard. more. I couldn't agree more. Um, getting back to the uh, Frontiers Festival, um, I, I believe that uh, Winger will actually perform at the festival, which means Red Beach will be there. Yeah, there Red you Beach, go. If Red Beach is there and I'm there. And if Matt <laughs> Starr is there with one of the Frontiers bands. And if Jeff misses out because he has to play with Foreigner, then Jeff misses out. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. So, so I bet I, it's fun working with those guys. Oh, writing and, oh my God. Yeah. It's, it's um, you know, think of it like this, Chris, you know, they send me some music and then I just, I look, I, li I hear it and I'm going, why are they sending it to me? Jeff Pilsen writes great songs for great bands. Red Beach has been writing hit singles since he was 17. <laughs> why is he sending me something, you know? <laughs> but we have a great, uh, we have a great working relationship and there's so much, there's so much music. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's awesome. There's such great, great players and great songwriters. And Jeff is, an incredible studio engineer and multitasks all the time. You know, he not only plays, he sings, he engineers, he produces. And um, man, it's, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a big pot of goodies, you know, yeah. and uh, I'm, I'm just, I love being part of it. It's, it's fantastic. And I believe we will do a third Black Swan. Even better. So, Good. There, yeah. you're the first to hear that. <laughs> nice. Well, thank so, you. I appreciate that. Yeah. So we are, uh, we're, we're pretty stoked. Yeah. We, lo we love the project and we hate to call it a project, um, yeah. which, which, of course, because of the way it's set up. Um, but one of these fine days, um, we get to play it live because it's, I think the, uh, the material is too good and there's too many people that want to hear it live and, and yeah we're, we'll be ready for it when it happens absolutely as we will all right thank well you. we're about here uh, wrapping up is there anything else you want to plug anything else you um, want to talk i about? want to say thank you for listening um listen to the alive record you know it's all over youtube right now and um all the links if you want to buy it pre-order it or just keep listening i say play it loud step and repeat you know and um, I'm just very grateful that uh, I get a chance to to talk to you and, and that people are listening. And, um, yeah, it's a good day for me, and I hope it's a good day for you. Yeah. Heck yeah, it's always a good day. And I absolutely encourage everyone to go out there and get Alive. It's a great album. They will I appreciate very it. much enjoy it and appreciate it. And, like I said, kudos on the Billboard chart ratings yesterday. I read it on Twitter, on Frontier Records uh, post, and it's it's awesome. And you're definitely reaping what you deserve. It's a great I, album. I, thank you. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thank absolutely. You. Well, we appreciate your time, and thank you very much. Have a great weekend, y'all. Thank you. Take care.